Well, my friends, we are on the cusp of one of the biggest tech events of the year, Google I.O. And if you're a fan of Google or Android, you already know this is gonna be pretty big. Google I.O. is where we get a significant glimpse into Google's strategic focus for the upcoming year with a ton of developer announcements, massive updates on how the Google ecosystem is evolving, and as a consumer, you typically get to see how your everyday products might change. Plus, sometimes, just sometimes, we might get some hardware news. So before we kick off this huge main event, I wanted to give you a quick rundown on everything we might see at Google I.O. 2025. And please, there is a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. Starting with everyone's absolute favorite tech product, AI, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of it at Google I.O. Specifically, I'm betting that Gemini will most likely be the main theme of the show. We know Google has been working like crazy over the past few years trying to gain dominance in the AI world, and Google I.O. 2025 will most likely have an even deeper focus on AI, more so now than in any previous year. Google has been diligently working on integrating AI into every service and product they possibly offer, and I think we're going to see a significant expansion of that strategy this year. Just recently, Google published their session list for Google I.O. that gives us a bit of detail as to what we can expect. We know for a fact Gemini is coming to Google's car platforms, including both Android Auto and Android Automotive operating system, which could be huge for in-car experiences. Then there's Android XR, which is described as being built from the ground up with Gemini in mind, so you can definitely expect some exciting updates in that regard. Chrome extensions are also noted to be getting some some kind of Gemini integration. Developers are being told with Gemini's multimodal APIs, they can build entirely new experiences for Chrome extensions. So I'm excited to see what that actually means in practice. And this next part is pure speculation, but it wouldn't surprise me to see Gemini integration across Google's wider array of products like earbuds, smartwatches, and maybe even some Nest devices. On top of it all, I'm sure that we are going to get updates on a lot of AI products that are on the verge of release or perhaps already in early testing, like Project Astra, Notebook LM, or even something like Project Mariner, for example. And look, I really do get it. I know a lot of people are tired of hearing about AI, but this is incredibly important for Google. This is their big strategic push, and as consumers slash tech enthusiasts, it is important that we hear how Google plans to advance AI technology, so it is worth keeping an eye on regardless of how personally interested you are, because AI will definitely be coming to every Google product product and service eventually. Another aspect we're likely to learn a lot more about is the Material 3 expressive design shift. This is being described as the future of Google UX design, which is a pretty bold statement. Based on the technical sessions that are being offered at Google I.O., it seems to include a dedicated workshop for developers specifically on Material 3 expressive. This workshop is expected to break down the research behind it, explain the new guidelines, and even share design files and alpha code so developers can begin experimenting right away. Regardless of the details, Material 3 Expressive is going to be huge for Google for better or for worse as it has the potential to retouch every aspect of the mobile experience. A core concept of this redesign from what we understand is the use of emotional design patterns. These are intended to boost engagement, usability, and ultimately the desire for their products. It sounds a bit abstract, but the idea is that these design patterns will also lead to action elements standing out more, resulting in greater responsiveness on the user's end. Hopefully, this translates to more intuitive, more engaging, and ultimately more efficient user interfaces. Personally, I'm just excited to see Google is making some major changes to the look and feel of Android and their apps. While we don't know how this is going to play out in the long term until we see it in action, I am extremely interested to see what they've cooked up. That said, we actually made a whole video on Material 3 Expressive right here on the 9to5Google YouTube channel, which I will link down below in the description. Definitely check that out as we go way more in depth than I can in this quick overview. We're also very likely to hear more about Android 16 as well, as Google has definitely been building up to it for quite some time now. Just lately, we learned that there is a dedicated event called the Android Show that actually airs a week before the main Google I.O. keynote that will be airing on May 13th. And Android 16 seems to be an obvious layup to be discussed at this show. It's practically a guaranteed topic, at least in my opinion. So it's highly likely we'll get some kind of preview going over the latest features and maybe a more concrete release date 
or timeline perhaps. Android 16 and its current developer preview state is pretty light on groundbreaking features, so I don't think they'll spend too much time on the platform stable version itself. However, we might hear about updates specifically for big screens like enhanced desktop windowing, improved stylus support, and general multitasking upgrades. But I fully expect they will show us some of the more interesting features that are supposed to come in a future QPR update. I'm talking about things like the rumored quick settings redesign, custom icon shapes, lock screen widgets, which have been a huge request within the Android community and a few others. And if I had to put my money on it, we will definitely hear more about how Material 3 Expressive will be integrated into the core of Android 16, tying back to that whole UX redesign I mentioned earlier. So with all that in mind, definitely stay tuned to the Android show, Google IO edition on May 13th. And why don't you do me a quick favor, actually, and make sure you're subscribed to the 9to5Google Google YouTube channel because there is a 100% chance we will be covering it in detail as well. Another big appearance we really hope to see and something I'm personally most excited to hear about is Android XR. I have a strong feeling about this one because Google does have dedicated sessions scheduled to discuss it. These sessions are talking about how to build apps with Android XR in mind and should guide developers through the process of adding immersive content like 3D models, stereoscopic video, and hand tracking to existing applications. We also know the SDK developer preview is advancing to beta and will likely be available at or around IO with a public launch of Android XR expected sometime late this year. From what we know, Android XR is built from the ground up with Gemini in mind, and given that AI is going to be such a massive theme this year, I'm 99% sure we'll see how Gemini will help improve the Android XR experience. And if you want to see a preview of that, by the way, I'll include a link to a TED Talk featuring the most up-to-date public view of this technology so you know a bit of what to expect ahead of time. Regardless, I am very excited to see how things go. This is no doubt a big deal for Google, especially as their biggest competitor in this space, the Vision Pro, hasn't really blown up in the way that Apple might have hoped for, at least in my opinion. And ultimately, I'm glad Google has spent some extra time to hopefully get things right with their approach to XR. But as always, we'll have to wait and see what they show off at the full keynote. We're also likely to see more information and hopefully a full launch of an official Notebook LM app. At this point, Google has already unveiled the design and the iOS App Store listing actually states it's expected on May 20th, which is not coincidentally the same day of Google I.O. So the timing seems pretty intentional here. I absolutely love Notebook LM as someone who learns and researches as a living. It's an incredibly powerful tool and having a nice polished mobile interface that should hopefully sync seamlessly with the web version would be absolutely awesome for research on the go. We know the official mobile app is supposed to replace the current web app that's available now, and it's expected to come with all the same great features like the audio overview with background playback, so you can listen to your notes and summaries while you're doing other tasks. You'll still have the ability to upload various sources like PDFs, websites, YouTube videos, and pasted text. And apparently there's going to be a tablet version as well, which is fantastic news for those of us that use tablets for products. Activity. Thankfully, pre-registration is available now both on the Play Store and the App Store, so definitely check that out if you're interested and in getting it as soon as it drops. Last but certainly not least, this is definitely a shot in the dark here, but it's very well possible we might see some kind of teaser or surprise revolving around the Pixel 10 series or perhaps some other kind of Pixel hardware. I do admit it could be a stretch, but Google has teased upcoming hardware at Google I.O. in the past, even if a full launch doesn't come until much later in the year. They've done this with devices like the Pixel 7 and the first Pixel Watch, giving us early glimpses. Plus, they also had full reveals of Pixel devices at I.O. in the past, like like the Pixel 7a, the first generation Pixel Fold, and the Pixel Tablet. So I'm holding out hope that they give us some kind of teaser, especially with the preview of Material 3 Expressive and the potential announcement of all these AI-powered features. It wouldn't be totally unexpected to see some kind of Pixel 10 information, even if it's just a stay tuned for more later this year kind of nod. It would certainly tie a lot of these software and AI announcements together with the hardware that would eventually run them. And that, my friends, is a speculative look at everything that you can potentially expect from Google I.O. 2025. Of course, there will be a lot of announcements focused really heavily on developers with deep dives into APIs, new tools, and all sorts of technical stuff. But for us consumers and tech enthusiasts, these are some of the big ticket items to keep an eye on. I think it's going to be a big year for Google, especially with their continued push into AI and their evolution of their design language and ecosystem. Of course, the 9to5Google team, including myself, will be 
be on the ground at Google I.O. covering all the announcements as best we can. We had a great time last year and it's always a fun experience to be a part of. So if anyone watching is around and happens to see Damien or I, definitely stop over and say hi. We'll definitely be going crazy trying to get all the work done, but as always, we love to connect with fellow tech enthusiasts. With that said, what are you most excited to see from Google I.O. this year? Are there any rumors or hopes that I didn't cover in this video? Let me know in the comments down below as I'd love to hear what the community is thinking. Until next time, this has been Jordan Floyd from 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.